So today we're going to look at how to cut a quilt. And last week you saw us prepare these where we stripped all of the bobs off of them. And this week we're going to cut one of them. So what I want to do is some of these quills are older than five years, so they would have had a chance to harden. So just press gently. You see, this has a little bit of give, this one. That's quite soft. This looks soft, that's really soft. So if you look at how my fingers move into there, if we take this one, there's not a lot of give on that one. Let's just try the others. And that, there's no give on that. What you're seeing is my fingers sort of depressing against something that's quite rigid. So, how to cut a quilt. Um, one of the first things you need is the quilt that you've prepared. I tend to use an X-Acto knife, the slightly thicker ones, the craft knives. And I always have a, um, an Arkansas stone handy just to sharpen the knife on. So what I do with the quill, I'm a little bit irreverent when I'm cutting a quill. Most people cut quills and, you know, they make it seem like such an impossible thing to do and it has to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's the nib that has to be perfect. So the first thing I do is I make an incision across the top, like so. Notice how far away my fingers are from the blade. So as you can see, it's quite a sharp blade. Um, I then insert the blade into the quill or use another quill just to sort of push the pith down, which is that spongy stuff on the inside. So if you look on the inside, you see all of this, this membrane. And let's just push that down in there and then turn. Now this is a turkey quill. So the cross section is slightly, slightly um, narrower than a goose quill, but it's still an oval cross section. Yeah. So we have the first incision. The next incision is to push down and out in a scooping direction. Now, most people who use a quill knife because the quill knife has a curved side, it sort of assists you with that slight, with that scooping direction. One of the reasons I prefer to use an X-Acto knife is because I can control the curve myself. But also, so there we see it there, a little scooped out shape. But also I can, um, I can change the blade whenever I want or sharpen it or, or get a sharper blade. Whereas with a quill knife, you have to keep sharpening it. Now the next thing to do is to work out where the quill sits. That's top of the quill. So if that's going to sit in your hand there, yes, then you want the nib to be there. So the flange, the shoulders need to be here. So the tines need to be there. Now, quite a lot of people would stick the quill knife into the quill and push up until they hear that satisfying crack. Um, I tend to put the slit in afterwards because I just find that, I, you know, you have a little bit more control over it, personally. Now I'm going to start paring away here. So one of the things I do when I pair away the, the shoulders to make the tines is I roll the knife while twisting the quill. So you have a really nice scooping shape. So this is quite flat. By the time you get down to here, by where the tine's going to be, you have a scooped out shape. See if we can see that a little closer. So let's see if you can see how sharp this bit is here. So that's a flat section. And notice how fine it gets because this whole thing is twisted. Yeah. So the next thing to do is to hold on to the quill, mark off the other side and basically do the same thing. Now, hopefully you would have seen 
how that Do you see how the, the, the top part is deeper in color and the bottom part and the bottom part is thicker in color. So that just goes to show how much of the scoop, so scooping action it had. So if we look at the quill again, we see those two shoulders. Yeah. Now if we look up into the quill. Do you see that there? So let's so that curve is quite tight that will never write on a piece of paper so we need to scoop that out so the nib needs to be a little bit smaller than that let's just pare this down a little bit so the next thing I do is I cut straight down beautiful crack and then I tidy this up a little bit and then I scrape all of this off clean up the inside a little bit and then then I put the cut in so that's the nib there just going to press right here. That gives you a nib. Then, then you just apply a little bit of pressure in a downward movement, not vertical. So you end up with a slight curve at the top of the nib. So there's a little curve just there. And I tend to clean it up around here now. So you see, there's that. Sharpen it up a little bit. And there we have a nice sharp nib. There you go.